no pumping. Behind the back, sleds cross, fade, the, hit him with the hoop lotte. Yeah. I don't want that to be looked at as disrespectful. Before I get into this, I know how this can get misconstrued and people want to put things on the internet and make it seem like that you have a, an issue with someone, and I don't. Fact of the matter is, I'm a big fan of, of Mr. Filet. I've been watching him for years. I've seen how he's grown his channel, both on Instagram and on YouTube, and I think it's phenomenal. The big piece that I want so many of you not to miss on this is he's been able to take what he's learned from being a student athlete and apply it in a major way to, to sell merchandise, to do appearances, to be invited to celebrity games, to be on a video game, all these things because he was able to take what he learned from University of Bridgeport in Connecticut, a Division II school, and applied it in a way that benefited him much, much beyond the 94 feet of a basketball court. And it's the same thing that so many other people are doing. Use your eyes and pay attention to what's going on. But he's not the only one. Think about the professor, the OG in the game that's done it. He could have been done after and one. He could have been done after and one because the narrative so many times where if you didn't play NBA, if you didn't play Division I, then it's a wrap. It's a done. You're, you suck. You can't make money playing basketball. You maybe can go overseas. He, he didn't do any of that. He made his own lane. All these individuals are making their own lane and they're making money. And they're making money doing it. He went to a junior, uh, junior college. The only reason he got that opportunity is because his dad and the coach knew each other, had a relationship, and made that happen. It wasn't because he was a blue chip, all American, McDonald's all American, but he was able to pick that what he learned from a student athlete perspective. In life. This guy's done deals with Mountain Dew and we've done world tours several times and back, connected with individuals. If you haven't checked him out, make sure you check him out. The professor, he did an interview with me. Most gracious, humble guy I've ever met. Amazing. Make sure you go check out his stuff. Let's not think, let's not forget about B Dot. B Dot, listen, the, the NBA impersonator, who would have thought that he could make a living doing that? But he's done it. Famous Los, he's done it. He's done it, doing commentating, doing all that stuff. He's done that as well. These, all these people sell things, they go out, they do that thing. Using what they learn as a student athlete and apply it in a major way, you can do the same thing. And how can I forget Rachel Demita, a previous host for NBA 2K TV, a current host and producer for Overtime, started off to be a YouTube creator. She's now an entrepreneur, sells merch. And as you already know, just like all the ones that I listed before her, she used the game of basketball and being a student athlete to grow her career away from basketball. Now, what's unique about her in particular is she only played college basketball for one year, one season, and then she transferred and went to a different school. But I don't want you to miss this. One year she played. Why do I double back and tell you that again? I tell you that because being a student athlete and the lessons that you learn are applicable outside of just the game that you play that you can earn a living implementing the same things you learned in the game of basketball, and she's doing that. For everyone that thinks that a student athlete is, is only those that are currently a student athlete, I beg to differ. I do not believe the same thing. In fact, this YouTube channel is not just for active student athletes. If you play a sport, I don't give a doggone, if it was in junior high, I'm talking to you. If you only play in the rec league, I'm talking to you. If you're playing in YMCA, Boys, Girls, and Club, and you never made a high school basketball team, I'm still talking to you because I know that you can use those same things that you learn while playing your sport in life and be impact, not only impactful, but to be more powerful than you ever give yourself credit. And Rachel Demita is doing that right now. She only played college basketball for one year let that soak in one year but that doesn't stop nba 2k tv to, to reach out to her to host that doesn't stop overtime she hasn't played basketball she was in college her, the bulk of her time in college was not spent playing basketball but she was able to still use basketball to create a career for herself 
that's impressive and that's the same thing you can do as well. I had to make sure I did this video because I watched one of his videos and he's talking about the G League, talking about him trying out, him going through the process and doing really well the G League. Scored quite a bit of points, got some rebounds, did his thing. A lot of people thought he was going to make it to the G League, but he tried out. But guess what? He didn't. Nothing wrong with that. You tried, you didn't make it, he didn't. But here's the thing. Here's the thing that bugged me out. When I saw a video that he put up, it just took me back. And I, I knew I had to make a video because I knew I didn't want anybody else to be misguided. He said some things there that I don't necessarily agree with, and I feel like it, if taken out of context, a lot of you may have the wrong mentality. Of that at one point, we're not going to make, you know, what we're chasing. But that doesn't give you, you know, a cop out to quit. If you get what I'm saying, you know, that doesn't give you leeway to say, OK, I tried, so I'm giving up. No, just because you didn't make something doesn't mean you stop working, doesn't mean you stop grinding. It means you grind more <laughs> to get where you want to go. Yes, I am not in the G League. Yes, I didn't get drafted. For those that do not know and keep asking me this question, I didn't make the G League. But I didn't boo-hoo. I didn't cry. I got back in the lab. I got back in the gym because I know at the end of the day, I'm going to make it. <laughs> That's the difference between successful people and people that want to be successful. <laughs> people that successful was determined. They got denied. You know, they fell multiple times, they got back up, they kept working. So people that want to be successful, is just hanging around, don't want to do it, not putting in the work. You know, they go through failure and they just want to sit in the failure. No, the grind does not stop. Have you ever heard something that was so outlandish, so ridiculous, so just off the wall, that before you even could respond, you got upset, like you can almost like cry. Just listen to it. That's how I feel when I hear Jesse with this video. And it's not a knock against Jesse at all because Jesse is a younger version of myself and a lot of other old heads that have went through and played basketball and been a student athlete. Someone that, that doesn't know what they don't know. And it's my job to make sure that they know. So this is not a shot against him at all. This is me talking to myself when I was going through the ranks. And that is this. He talks a little bit about success. The difference between successful people and those that are not. No, that's the difference between someone that doesn't believe they have anything to offer the world beyond basketball, beyond their sport, compared to those that do. Now you just have to use that same mentality in a different chapter of your life. It's funny when people say the first one in the gym and the first one out, all that stuff. Sounds good. But why don't people use that in the classroom? In fact, if you use that same mentality in the classroom for your studies, for your major and grades, you would make it a lot further than if you applied it to sports. Because if you apply it in sports, you're still just an ankle sprain away, an ankle break away, an MCL, an ACL, a lateral collateral ligament away from Losing it all, even after hard work. But if you apply that to your studies, you would get 10 times, 100 times as far. And then when you come up on some money, you would know how to keep it because academics was so important to you. Education was so important to you that your CPA wouldn't be able to steal money from you because you would already be hip to the game beforehand. The fact of the matter is you are building your hopes and dreams on sand. And all it takes is a tide to come in one time to knock all that mess down. Don't you understand that making it to the league isn't just about working hard? That the only people that tell you that they made it to where they're at and made it to the NBA because they worked hard are lying to you. There are always variables that you don't control that have an effect on the outcome. If you think that the 60 players that made it in the first and second round in the NBA draft are the ones that worked the hardest, you are lost and confused. Jesse and everyone else that can hear my voice, that is not the case. Though it sounds good, that is not the case. Jesse, Jesse, you just told me that there were people that you were that you were outshining at the doggone, at the doggone tryout. You scored points, you got rebounds, you showed up, you did your thing. So why didn't you make it? Why didn't you make it then? 
apparently there's some other variables that maybe you weren't aware of, of why those individuals made it and you didn't. It happens all the time. Listen, there are many people on the YouTube channel that will tell you all the things that will puff up their chest. I made it to college basketball because I was the best, because I was the fastest, because I had a 45-inch vertical, because I could run like a deer, because I could jump like a gazelle, all this bull crap. I'm the first YouTuber to tell you that I wasn't the best. I just made I just made the best out of the opportunity that I had. I was an undersized big man, but I worked hard. But guess what? There were people in high school that were better basketball players than me. And guess what? Just and guess what, Jesse? No one wants to tell you this, and no, you're probably not even going not gonna even hear me when I say this. But there are people in the NBA, there are people in the G League, there are people that whatever professional league that don't work harder than you. They may have been more talented. They may have been, they may fit the offense of what the, the, the they may fit the offense better for what the coach needs. You may be a dribble drive type guy. This this person brings being able to the, to run the run the Princeton offense. These things matter. They may have went to the right college, played for the the right coach, came from the right coaching program. Things that you cannot control. Working hard is an ingredient to any of your goals, but it's not the only ingredient. Just because you worked hard, that don't mean you're going to make it. That don't mean that. There are sometimes variables you do not have control over. The ones you do have control over, you, you exhaust those outlets. But the ones you don't, you don't. And no amount of you just working hard is going to fix that. You got to be careful with this, Jesse, because I know that you're, you're trying to inspire people. And you're doing a great job of that. But you have to be careful in your words because if I go off of your video, Jesse... I sound like a quitter because I didn't make it to the NBA. But let me let me let me kick some stats to you. Let me let me kick some things that, that happened in my life, and I want you to let me know if I still am a quitter. Basketball was something that I used to get my school paid for. I'm of the small percentage of Americans that don't own a student loan, and largely because of basketball. Does that make me a quitter? Does it make me a quitter when I failed the sixth grade? Got associate promoted from the 8th to the ninth grade. Should have failed the 8th grade, but they, you know, no child left behind. They let me keep going. Put in special education classes. Put in a class, that, that, uh, put in a special education classes so much so that my sister, who's five years younger than me, can do my homework. She's in first grade. I'm in sixth grade. Battled through that, went to college and played basketball. And the only reason I went to college was because I played basketball and had an opportunity to get a full ride scholarship. Does that make me a quitter? Does it make me a quitter that I continue to use it as a tool after both my mom and my father passed away of cancer and I didn't have any type of financial means to get through college? Did it make me a quitter then? Did it make me a quitter that it put me in a position now that I have three degrees, salary pay paid position, I get to go around, I get to go around the country and talk to student athletes about how to be impactful both in high school and in college, both on the court and off. Does that make me a quitter? Does it make me a quitter that I was able to separate all the things I provided the game of basketball and carry that over to life? Did that make me a quitter? Did it, does it make me a quitter because I stopped short of shaking David Stern's hand or now Adam Silver's hand? Does that make me a quitter now? If that's the case, being as debt-free as I am and then racking up with the education that I have and touching the lives that I've been able to touch and the ones that I'm still going to be able to touch for good, if that makes me a quitter, quitter feels good to me. It feels amazing. The reason I'm having this conversation with you, Jesse, is because you, much like me and, and other student athletes, have a hard time separating that of what we offer the game and the rest of our lives that we have to live after the game. And what I'm telling you is this, this is not a knock against you type video. I'm a fan of you. So you don't even, don't huff and puff thinking that I'm trying to, 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 to diminish any of the light that you have shining on you because you have more, there's gonna be shining on you. You're very talented. 
in more ways than just basketball. Sing with the best of them, dance with the best of them, no marketing, all that stuff, you got it. But it would be a crime and a shame for you to, to make this tiny box of making it to the league to be a barometer if you're successful or not. Because I would say that you're already successful. That you're already, if you make it to the league, great. I'm not trying to say that's bad in making it. I'm just trying to tell you that you're bigger than bigger than just basketball, whether you make it or you don't. What if I told you that you were bigger than basketball? What if I told you that your talents, your gifts, the blessings that you have are, are, are bigger than just basketball? What if I told you that you're smarter than you're giving your credit for, than you're giving yourself credit for? What if I told you that you can use everything you learn with your sport, whether it be basketball or football or tennis or whatever, and apply it to life and apply it to careers that you haven't even tapped into that will make you a lot more money than if you made it to the league? What if I told you that? Well, guess what? Jesse and everyone else is listening. I'm telling you that. I'm telling you that. That you don't have to diminish and belittle yourself and put yourself in a box and think that it's basketball or I'm not or I'm not important or I'm not successful. It's division one or I'm not successful. It's basketball or I'm not successful. If I don't play for the high school team, I'm not successful. It's a lie. It's not true. You're cutting yourself short on all the things that you have afforded to you. Jess, I hope you make it to the league, but it's not going to change my opinion of you. Still think you're awesome. Still think you're great. Still think you're phenomenal. You don't need to shake the commissioner's hand for me to know that. Still feel like you're super talented. None of that's going to change. I hope it doesn't change in your eyes either. Whether you make it to the NBA or if you don't. Loud E.